Right, today we're going to have a look at designing the pear-shaped cam using SolidWorks. So step one, we first need to create a new part. Now to do that, we can just click on this little icon at the top here, this one here that says new, or you can click on this little arrow here and go file, new, either way, end up with the same thing. This will then appear and we want to create a new part, click on part, click OK, that then brings us into our page, right? The next thing we need to do is choose a plane to draw on. And on the left-hand side here, you'll see there are a number of planes. You can use any plane you like. I'm going to use the front plane to get to it. There are a number of ways of getting to it. One way of doing it is just to simply click on the plane, and then these little icons appear, and you want the far right-hand side says normal, normal two. Click on that, and you'll see it brings the plane flush onto the page. So that's on that plane how we can start drawing. Before we start drawing, before we do any dimensions or add anything, the next thing we must always check is down the bottom right-hand corner here, you must make sure that we have selected millimeters, grams, and seconds. Make sure that it's ticked uh, before we start doing any dimensions. The next thing we have to do is come up, make sure you're on the Sketch tab. I mean, there are other tabs available, uh, but the Sketch tab, that's what we want to do. We want to start sketching, and there are a whole range of different shapes you'll see at the tops over here. We want to draw the basic pear shape, which is made out of two circles. So we want a circle, click on circle, we'll come down to start drawing. We're going to start drawing from the origin, and you'll see this little orange dot appears when I get onto the origin, and this is the origin here. Click on the orange dot and then drag out. Don't really too worry too much about the dimensions, we'll come back and add the dimensions to that. Um, I need two circles. The next circle I want must be in line with the center of this, and you can see when I get it in line with the center, this little dotted blue line appears. So when I start, I want to start on there. So on there, click my first click, and then I want to drag this across. Careful not to do that, because then the center line is out. Keep the center line on there, and get it to join up with the edge of the circle. You'll see when it gets to the edge of the circle, it goes orange. When I'm happy with that, I can let go of the button, and this little green icon appears, which tells me that there's a relationship. And the relationship is that these two circles are tangent to each other. Uh, Happy with that. The next thing I want to do is on the left-hand side, you click tick because I'm finished drawing circles. Now I want to add some dimensions to this. And hopefully you can remember we use the Smart Dimension tool. Click on Smart Dimension. Click on the outer edge of the circle. And then we can drag this out. Click on here. We've set it up so that the circle is 40 millimeters, the big one. And then the smaller one over here. Click on the circle. Bring it out. And we've set this up at 20 millimeters. And so those are our two dimensions. Right, I'm finished dimensioning. Click the green tick over here. I'm done with my dimensioning. The next thing I need now is two lines along the edges over here. All right, and again, I'm on my sketch tab. There is a line. When I draw this line, I want to draw it longer than it needs to be because I can trim it down later. If I draw it too short, then I won't be able to get it across the edge of this circle and create a tangent. So draw a circle, and you can draw it quite far away from the edge there. When you're finished with the circle, you have to right-click and go to Select. That circle's now done. Sorry, not circle. That line is now done. I then want to add another line. Click on there. Same idea again. Draw it more longer than it needs to be. I'm finished there. Right-click, then Select. There are my two lines ready to go. My next step is I want to get these two lines to touch the edges of these circles as a tangent as well. Similar to what we did over here. Uh, but we need to get a relationship between these lines as a tangent. Now, to do that, you have to hold down the Shift button. So I'm going to press the Shift button now. And whilst I'm holding it down, go along, click once on the line, let go of the button, go along to the edge of the circle. I'm still holding the Shift button down. Click it again. And now I can let go of the Shift button. And on the left-hand side here, you'll see there what relationship do I want to add or what property. I want to make it a tangent. When I click on that, you'll see the tangent appears, and I'm done with that. I must now then click the green tick that says I'm done with that, and I want to then go on to the next property. So again, I'll hold down the shift button, which I'm holding down now, click the line, then click the circle. Now I can let go of the shift button, come down here, click on tangent, and again, you can see I've done that. Happy with that, green tick. Repeat the same process, holding down shift, click on the line, click on the circle, Click tangent, that's all happy with that, green tick, again hold down shift, click on the line, click the circle, select tangent, green tick. And so you can see now I've created a relationship with all of these parts, there is the one, there is the other, there is the other, and there is the other. 
I'm not done with that. I now need to get rid of those excess lines that I no longer want to use. And I also want to get rid of these lines on the middle so that I create my cam shape. So to do that, again, in the sketch options over here, there is the Trim Entities option. Click on Trim Entities, and then it gives you a whole number of options to choose from on the left-hand side. You want to use the bottom one, Trim to Closest, make sure it's selected, and then you just go along and click on the lines that you wish to delete. So I want to delete that line, click there. I want to delete that line, click there. Then I want to delete this and that, and then this one, and then finally the last two, one there and one there. And that is now, you can see, the basic shape of my pear-shaped cam. I'm now finished trimming, so I want to click green tick on the left-hand side. That is now done. The last thing I need to do is add my little circle again in the center point. So I'll come back to the sketch tab, select circle, come back to the origin, because that was the origin of this big circle. Drag it out any size that I want. Done. I'm finished drawing my circle, so click the green tick. And now I need to add my dimension. So click smart dimension. Select the outer edge of the circle and select that at five millimeters. Done. All right. So that's the drawing now finished. The next thing we need to do is obviously I'm finishing finished my dimensions. Click the green tick. I want to extrude this out now to my three millimeter diameter. And that is a feature that SolidWorks allows us to do. So on the tap, you'll see the features tab. And there are a whole range of options, but the one that we're interested in is the extruded boss base. We want to, as you can see by the little image, bring the part out by three millimeters. So click on extruded boss base. It should automatically give you the pivot that you want to uh, extrude, but you may have to sometimes click on the, the face or the surface that you wish to extrude. And you can see it does that. It defaults to 10 millimeters. We want to change that to three millimeters. You don't have to type millimeters in there because down the right hand side, I've already set that up as millimeters, grams and seconds. So simply type three, click the green tick, and there is my part. And you can now use the arrows to go around and look at your nice new part that you have created, the pear-shaped cam. When you're done with that, at the top again, you can click this little save icon. There's a little arrow next to it. You can go save as, click on save as, and then go save it in your design engineering folder. And once you've done that, that is the end of that pear-shaped cam design. You can then go and design your own uh, cams from here. Thank you very much.